So today I'm going to show you my quick five minute mum makeup. It's just my quick on the go, do my makeup as quick as I can while the kids are getting ready or sometimes I'll drop them at school and then I'll have a quick five minutes in the car doing my makeup before I go to work. I start off by using Anastasia Beverly Hills Clear Brow Gel. It really helps to keep my quite unruly but small brows in place. So once I've done that, I leave that. I don't put any, any brow product in at all until I then um, come to the end of my makeup and the um, clear brow gel has dried. I'm now gonna use Laura Mercier Secret Camouflage in SC3 and it's a really hard concealer. It's just really dense in um, pigment so it covers really well and you need the tiniest little bit now with the laura mercier ones um they come with two different colors so on here you've got the um like a yellow toned and a neutral toned. literally i'm just using the yellow toned one all over my lid um, and just getting it right into the corners Right, so that's my lids done. Now sometimes I will put eyeshadow on my lids, but as this is a really quick makeup look, I'm just going to put some pressed powder on top of my lids to stop that concealer from creasing. So I'm just going to use a little blending brush, which is a MAC 217, and um, use the MAC Medium Dark Studio Care Blend Pressed Powder, and I'm just going to take that all over my lid, just a small amount. It doesn't need to be loads, it's literally just to set that cream product in place so it doesn't crease. Now I'm going to use coffee eye pencil. I always put eye pencil underneath my eye. What I would say is as your skin matures, I would steer away from black and go for a brown or a dark brown, like this coffee one is very dark brown. And I just take it really, really close in to my lash line. Now the great thing about this liner is it stays put unbelievably well. Now that's what you want for, you know, so easy mum daytime makeup. You don't want something that's going to be halfway down your face when you get through the day. I then, with a pencil brush, which is a MAC 219 brush, I, um, and you can see there it's little, really little. It's almost the same size as the pencil that I've just put on, the MAC coffee pencil. I am putting some matte texture eyeshadow, which is like an, a really warm orangey brown. And I'm just going back and forth over the top of where I've put my coffee liner. So back and forth, just really blend it out. Again, very much like when I've put the Studio Care Blend Powder over the top, I'm just literally setting that pencil in place. And I'm just looking up to stretch out the skin as much as possible. Just going back and forth. Okay, so that's blended out the eyeshadow over the top of the pencil. Right, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do my foundation. So my favourite foundation at the moment, because it always changes, is um, Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Foundation. And I use that in shade 3.5. The shades are absolutely crazy with Armani, so the best thing for you to do is actually go in there yourself and get tested for your shade and maybe take a test at home as well. So I put a couple of pumps on the back of my hand and then I'm just going to go in with a blending brush. I'm going to use a Real Techniques, I think this is called the Buffer Brush, the name of it's um, rubbed off, but if you go into Boots or Superdrug, they sell real techniques and you're looking for something that's quite flat on the top, quite densely packed with the bristles and you just tap it onto the corner of the foundation blob and I'm just going to press it all over my skin and we're going in. Now the key area for me for foundation is my cheeks because I've got rosacea I get a lot of redness in my cheeks so I like to cover that up. And I always work from the inside outwards. Now, some people like to put on their foundation with a brush that looks like this. And that's fine for just brushing it on. But then as a buffing brush, you really need to be getting one of these, which is helping to really press the product into your skin. For speed, I don't want to use 15 different brushes. So I'm just literally using the buffing brush. And as you can see, I'm just using circular motions just to press and buff the product into my skin and just working it from the middle of my face outwards. 
You don't want loads of product around your hairline because if it sticks in your hairline, it's just an impossible to get out. And it's always a telltale sign that someone's not really looking after themselves or cleaning the face properly when you've got loads of product in the hairline. You tend to find young girls when they're, you know, when they're just learning about makeup, they get it all stuck in the hairline and yeah, it's not a good look. So, so in this area where I want fuller coverage, rather than buffing the product, I tend to just press it because I like to get that fuller coverage in that area. Now, some people have a great even skin tone and they don't need to worry about, you know, coverage in areas like that. But I do because, because I do get so much redness. I find that with rosacea, using a foundation actually calms my skin. So I like to use foundation you know most days because of that reason that's a really light coverage sometimes i use more but I'm, we're just doing a really quick look today aren't we so i'm just going to keep it at that now as i've mentioned before i have quite a bad thread vein there that i always say it doesn't bother me but the more of these tutorials i do the more i realize that i do spend quite a while covering it so i'm going back in with the laura mercier secret camouflage and i'm just pressing over that area where i want more coverage so I'm going in with the concealer and then I'm going to go back over with my foundation. So another little blob onto the back of the brush and just pressing that on. I think what happens is obviously as winter comes, my rosacea does get more aggravated and that thread vein definitely gets worse every year. But anyway, it is what it is. Right, my under eye area doesn't look like it needs much coverage today. That's because I put a little bit of foundation on before I went on the school run. So I am going to use a little bit of my Laura Mercier Secret Concealer. So the big one is Secret Camouflage and this little pot is Secret Concealer. It's a bit more of a creamy consistency. And I use Shade One, which is a nice, really light, lifting shade. It's a um, it's more of a pink tone because it neutralizes the blue of the under eye area so obviously when you're not drinking enough water or getting enough sleep which most of us mums don't do either of those things you do tend to find you get quite a bit of blue in that under eye area so drink more water I'm now going to go in with my trusty MAC Mineralized Skin Finish and the shade is Give Me Sun um, so I'm going to use a this is a Charlotte Tilbury brush and she calls this the powder and sculpt brush. So it's a really nice little shape and I'm gonna use that to go in with my bronzer. Now with my bronzer, I tend to use it more like, some people like to contour with a deep color. I like to just put my bronzer like a, almost like a contour shade. Now don't get carried away with whether you need to contour or not. Don't worry about it. It is something that's been, you know, obviously brought into, everybody knows about contouring now and I'll always asks about it, but no one really knows what to do with it. Contouring is literally creating definition and shape where it's not already there. So around the hollow of your cheekbones where you want a bit more cheekbone definition. If you feel your forehead's too big, I like to just take a little bit at the top of my forehead and then a little bit on the end of my nose. So yeah, so that's basically the amount that I will use on a daily basis for my bronzer, depending on how pale I'm feeling or what I'm feeling. Right, I'm now going to go in with my highlighter, which is by Topshop of all places, and it is shade Crescent Moon, which is like a really nice sort of peachy, creamy shade. Um, it's got a pearlescent finish to it, and I just, using the same brush, I'm just gonna go to the tops of my cheekbones, a brow burn and kind of like almost like a C shape round here to here. This just gives a bit of luminosity to your skin where it might not naturally be there. Right, okay, now I'm going to do my eyebrows. So as I said before, my eyebrows are the bane of my life because they're so small. I overplucked them like a lot of us did in the, probably in the 90s or whenever it was. And um, yeah, they're just thin. You can see the shape that I used to try and create. But what I've done is tried to grow in and they look a lot worse on camera than they are in the flesh because you can see the, the dyed areas rather than, you know, when you're in the flesh, you can see all the darker bits underneath as well that I've got. So what I try and do is because I'm a HD brow stylist as well as a makeup artist, 
I kind of do a HD brow on myself, so I'll tint and wax. The only thing I can't do on myself is threading. I've not mastered that yet. Threading on yourself is quite an art because you need your hands to stretch the thread, but also you need um, your hands to stretch the skin, especially in older skin. It's, you know, obviously got a lot less elasticity in it, so it's less firm, unless you've had Botox, obviously, then that's a different story altogether. So yeah, I'm just using really, so I'm using, I'm using the Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Wiz Pencil, um, in shade soft brown and I just basically I like to just create almost like fake hair strokes going through my brow so then I filled out my brow now obviously because I've got such rubbish brows I need to fill them quite strong but that's just my brows and that's I mean to be honest that's how I like to wear them anyway so it's not it's no big deal um and then i bring them in to about there because again the trend used to be to start them from the edge of your nose but now the you know the hd way is that you start them basically where your glasses would sit and slightly out so that's that's where they say it should be some people disagree some people agree but that's how i've been taught that's how i do things so just filling out, filling out, filling out. The amount of filling out I have to do is actually quite ridiculous, but it is what it is. And this has just reminded me that I need to order a new brow pencil. I get my Anastasia Beverly Hills stuff from Cult Beauty. I will link be below all of the products that I've used, but obviously, I'll link to where I buy them from, but there will be other places that you can get them from. Now, obviously, five minute makeup is not quite five minutes when you've got to talk and do your brows at the same time. But yeah, they're all thereabouts. They match. Just, you get a little brush on the end as well. I'm just gonna brush through the center section here. Right. I'm now going to go in with my mascara. This is the Max Factor Masterpiece in Rich Black and it's the original one, not the waterproof one. It's the one in the gold tube. So what I always do is I do the tops of my lashes first. I now go up on my top lashes, dragging it upwards like this. Right, I'm going to go along the bottom as well. Some people like to go along the bottom, some people don't. Personally, I do, because I like to give that frame to my eye. And I think because I've always had a heavy upper lid, I've always liked to get, give that more definition around the bottom of my eyes. Right, now I'm going to do my lips with Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk Lip Liner. Now, I would say that this is the closest shade to most people's natural lip colour. So I'm just going to put this on, which will give a little bit more definition. And I'm taking it as an actual lip liner around my lip and then all over it's not really uh, the, the done thing anymore is it to have just a lip liner as a lip liner it tends to be more as a base now you can leave it at that or you can add a bit of something extra. Today I'm going to add a bit of something extra and it's my Illamasqua um, lipstick in Born. The shade is Born, it's a part of the rose gold collection. Now annoyingly for you people watching this that's been discontinued but I did phone, because so many people asked me what shade it was, I did phone Illamasqua and I spoke to them and they sh said that the shade Bear or Starkers was quite similar. So that's it. Quick five minute school run mum makeup for you ladies that have been asking on the gram.